Hello everyone and welcome back to Taito Ecology and it's time to check in on our biomes you guys. Oh my gosh, we have been doing so good with our biodomes so far. Um, but I'm a little bit nervous that some of our biodomes are going to begin to experience a little bit of a crash as we've added in like a lot more creatures or maybe too many predators or maybe too much prey. So it's been a little while since we've checked on Fernville and not Kansas, but I'm still really excited and in love with Pyrite Canyon, the new desert biome. So we're going to jump in there today and if we have time, we'll go check on the others today too. It has been just one month since the last time we checked in on these guys because I was too nervous three months. So we're going to come on in and see if we need to add in more cactuses. All right. A group of rattlesnakes is starving. No. Oh my goodness. Okay. All right. So let's see what's going on. All right. Um, it looks like, oh, wow. Oh, Albot, I didn't know I could turn you like that. <gasps> That's so cool. All right, so apparently it said a group of rattlesnakes is starving, but I don't see any notes about that. Of uh, rattlesnakes? Oh, their hunger is really high. Oh, no, did they eat? Did they eat all of the... Where's all the kangaroo rats? <laughs> all right, you guys. Well, we have just learned the um, the kangaroo rats. I don't have any notes about what happened, but it looks like the kangaroo rats have actually died off. So the rattlesnakes ate all of them. So let's add in more kangaroo rats. And I guess we need some deer mice. So it looks like we definitely need to have a much higher population of kangaroo rats and deer mice than I thought we did. So we'll immediately throw some of those guys down there. And there were so many of them. <gasps> that makes me nervous to see a group of deer mice has a low population. What, already? Are you guys just like, well now the snakes are happy. Let's see if we can find where the snakes are eating. Cause already there's a low population. I didn't know rattlesnakes ate so much. All right, so here's these guys coming in. Are you dead, sir? Or just sleeping? All right, so they're just sleeping. And then where is... Ugh, go on, Albot. Go in the right direction. So I just put down a whole bunch of these guys. All right, let's see if we can find... Here's the moths. That's really pretty, actually. See, it's getting more exciting to just, like, zip around and try to find everybody. Wandering through here. Oh, here we go. It's a little rattlesnake. Tell me of your health, little one. So it's a five week old rattlesnake. Ooh, it's making that hissy sound. And it's now surviving. So good, they're, they're happier. And our desert tortoises are doing well. They still have a very, very long time before they have to worry about like reproducing or anything like that. It looks like they are getting a little bit hungry. How are the plants doing? The joint fur over here is taking a few hits. Yeah, it looks like these guys are taking a few hits on the leaves. And what about all of the grasses? The grasses seem like they're doing okay. And these guys are doing okay. They are so far away from flowering though. So I don't think they're going to help out any of our, our tortoises. <gasps> Let's put in some agave. I think the agave flowers and it should be able to help out our little ones. So, and who knows, maybe the deer mice need agave as well. So let's put down a bunch of agave all over the place. They're so tiny way down there. Hi guys. See, there's so many mice. Well, there's so many mice. <laughs> I I don't know how our snakes could go hungry. Maybe I just didn't add in enough populations last time. I mean, it's like a desert full of mice. I have a feeling this is going to balance itself out maybe somewhat tragically sooner than later. All right, well, let's put down more agave. Maybe a big sagebrush for all of you guys to hide under. Can I put it? Ooh, I can put it right over here. All right, we'll put it right over there. Desert spoons. So we'll put some desert spoons down, more agave. I feel like we need more things like millipedes to remove some of this waste matter because all of those mice are going to poop a lot. That's a lot of pooping mice. You know what I mean? So I feel like we need to make sure we have enough millipedes, enough mushrooms to be able to remove any of the, um, the detritus that they need to get rid of. All right. And there's the agave again and maybe some grasses. Oh, that's some nice grasses. If I was a little mouse, I would be very happy to use those grasses as my little, like, mouse home. All right, good. So we're starting to add stuff in. I really want to see how extremely awesome we can take the desert to. Like, what can we add in? Actually, what's a big bush that also comes? <gasps> like, burial cactuses! Oh, I wish I could add in rocks. Like, I'm getting the Zoo Tycoon 2 itch. Because it's like, but I want to put a big desert rock right there. That would be so cool. All right. I want to put in lots of desert cactuses, or barrel cactuses, excuse me. 
Because like I mentioned last time, I just feel like with the cactuses, you're not going to travel very far from where the original cactus you came from was. Unless maybe you have some nifty uh, pollinators. Not just not just the like moth and butterfly kind, but the the fruit eating kind, like the animals, like maybe these deer mice will come over, eat some of the fruits from some of the cactuses and go way over there and poop. And then that's where the plants will actually grow. So that's important to think about too. All right, so we're keeping it pretty low level so far. We've got a whole bunch of mice. We've got um, some king snakes. Let's try adding in an armadillo. So we're gonna get a little armadillo family put down maybe back over here. So we're gonna add in a little armadillo and let him get going and let's see what does the armadillo need let's actually read the bio decks for the armadillo armadillos are, are insects are always on the menu for armadillos armadillos will eat just about any type of insect and can even use their powerful nose to smell insects deep underground they aren't picky about their food however they will eat mostly insects and invertebrates they will also eat small reptiles and mammals so maybe those mice might have a little bit of a competition with the armadillo um, bird eggs and plant matter Armadillos are an important prey item for many larger creatures, including cougars, eagles, wolves, bobcats, and jaguars. It would be really cool if we could add eagles in this. Oh my gosh. Baby armadillos are particularly vulnerable to predators. Their shells are much softer than the shells of adults, making them easier to attack and kill. To ward off predators, armadillos retreat into their burrows, blocking the entrance with their back, curling up and bracing themselves so they're more difficult to remove. And that's true. A lot of people will think of armadillos and then they think they'll like roll up into the tight little ball. And that's one thing they do, but what they'll often do is they have their burrows and they'll like run into the burrow and then they'll stick their back against the back of the burrow, like the opening of the burrow, and use that armored back to kind of act like a plug so that the animal can't scratch them, can't pull them out, and they can kind of like jam the door to the burrow with their back themselves and protect themselves. A lot of creatures, there's a few creatures that do that. I can think of... Um, like trapdoor spiders, some trapdoor spiders. Also, kind of like if you ever look, there's like one spider that has this really awesome butt. And I know that sounds weird, but there is this species of spider that has this awesome like trapdoor butt. And I need to find it so I can show it to you guys because it's pretty amazing. But it will climb into its burrow and just use its butt as a block. And so yeah, here we go, talking about all the technical details of animals again. It's, it's kind of amazing, really. Anyway, armadillos will also leap into the air to scare predators away. That would probably scare the heck out of me, too. Uh, though this often backfires when the predator is an oncoming car or truck. So, oh, sorry about that little guy. So that's what they will do. They can survive nearly anywhere as long as the climate is warm. They will thrive as well in the desert as they do in the rainforest. So that's wonderful! Thrive, my little ones! They're already getting hungry, though! Okay. Okay, um, darn, I may have, I may have, like, jumped the gun a little bit getting some armadillos. So let's get some of these sweet acacias down. And then we're going to get some of these cactuses over here. Why, you say? Siri, those aren't, those aren't things that the armadillo will eat. Well, it did say that they're kind of like insectivores. Or they're insectivores, but they'll, they'll also eat, like, plant matter, too. But the reason I do that is so that there'll be food for the scavengers, our ants. So we're gonna need to add in, I think, a lot of ant species. Like a lot of ant colonies, I should say. And so we're just gonna kind of move along, kind of like what we did with the frogs. And I wonder if the scav- I wonder if the little trails- it'd be cool if you could follow like the little trails of ants. But yeah, we're gonna do an experiment. We're gonna build lots of ant hills in the desert, like a ton of them. Now let's just see what happens. Like, can you starve out an anthill if you put too many of them? Will they start attacking some of the other creatures? Because ants, I mean, I've seen them raid bird nests, actually. And the ants of South America can get really aggressive. Like, really aggressive towards anything that comes in to its way. Even mammals can fall, fall prey to the ants when they're on the march. So this is, this is an experiment in ants. I'm actually kind of excited to see where it goes. Like, are we just going to create this haven? This is getting a little excessive. It's excessive on purpose, though, so don't panic, you guys. But yeah, I want to see if we're going to end up creating, like, this interesting haven. What happened to all my money? No, I've used up all my money without realizing it. Oh, no. Okay, we need, probably need to get more mice in. So there we go. There's our gigantic anthill experiment. Hopefully, it'll keep them going. And the deer mice, interestingly enough, are having a hard time of it, too. So I'm going to throw in a bunch of deer mice. 
with only one group that eats the deer mice, only one group of rattlesnakes, we're already having that many issues. So let's put in like another thing of kangaroo rats, maybe. Maybe, I don't know. Maybe what we should do instead. Let's try this. We're gonna put in um coral snakes over here. Let's put in more rattlesnakes. I'm gonna put in another set of rattlesnakes down here because there's a lot of mice over here. And then we're gonna kind of really shake things up a little bit by putting the king snake who specializes in eating other snakes all the way over here. So now we have the anthill experiment and we have the king snakes who are headed out and we're gonna have to see what they do. So yeah, we're gonna have to watch this. Here's all of the anthills, tons of anthills. Here go the little uh, rattlesnakes being adorable. So we've got our little rattlesnake experiment, ant experiment, got cactuses all over the place, which is a good thing. Where's my armadillos? Are they off eating? There's my armadillos. So they seem like they're doing good. We have to build up that bottom layer to the pyramid of food, make sure that there's plenty of prey. And then, oh, here's a dead one. So somebody got eaten. But yeah, make sure there's plenty of prey and then we will add in some of the big carnivores. There's a little mouse. I'm not seeing the snakes. It does seem like there's significantly less mice than at first, but I mean, look at all these guys. My snakes should be fine. And it looks like this mouse is actually eating the millipedes. So yeah, the millipede population is taking a little bit of a hit from the mice. All right. And this one's hungry. How are you hungry? Okay, he came over and he's eating off of this grass, so he should be fine. So yeah, the mice are pretty easy to sustain for their caloric budget and what they need to survive. But where did all of my snakes go? Where are all of my rattlesnakes? I really want to see them. And it's hard to see them when you're not in camera mode. So we're going to zip around. It's that nerve-wracking moment. Ah, here comes a king snake. So is he on the hunt for a rattlesnake? Is that where you're going, my friend? Are you hunting rattlesnakes? Hmm. Well, where'd the rattlesnakes go? All right, well, we'll have to see. All right, so there's the king snake. There's the tortoises. <laughs> I'm going to be so excited if we manage to get one of the achievements for the tortoises to, like, grow up of old age. That would be really cool. And then uh, here goes more snakes. Ah, oh, we have some king snake interaction. So here's a king snake down here. And then here's a rattlesnake over here. And yay, I got more money. Thank goodness. Oh, and what's this? <gasps> Are you a baby? Are you a baby rattlesnake or just normal sized rattlesnake? Maybe a normal sized rattlesnake. Oh my gosh. You guys, I think it's like the mouse ant buffet. What even? These ants aren't going to survive long enough to feed my armadillos at this rate. Like, look at this nonsense. This is kind of ridiculous. <laughs> snakes, snakes, help me. I need help. <laughs> There's too many mice. They're destroying my ant populations. <laughs> oh my gosh. I need to add more snakes. I know that it said that the snakes were like hungry before, but I just, I don't trust this. I don't trust this long term. Snakes don't eat that often. I'm going to add in another population of rattlesnakes like down here. That should, that should hopefully be okay, right? I hope that's going to be okay. This is ridiculous. <laughs> Ridiculous, I say. Okay, well, um, let me see. I'm going to add another sweet acacia tree, I guess. We'll put that over here. It's kind of awkward because I don't want to... I always overdo it on plants. I know I always overdo it on plants. And I don't want to overdo it on plants. But I don't want it just to be empty, boring, boring, boring face either. So let's put these down too. And then... Oh, let's put down one of these honey guys in just a moment. We're going to keep an eye on everybody. That's terrible. My poor ants are just not going to even stand a chance. My poor armadillos. What are you going to eat, little armadillo? You're doomed. You're doomed because the mice are eating all of the things that I put out for you. It's a good thing I put down that many ants then. Jeez. Um, let's see. And desert kangaroo rats. So interestingly enough, it's not the deer mice that seem to be having the problems. It's the desert kangaroo rats. And we've still got plenty of snakes. So that's okay. Uh, wow. Apparently we have eight armadillos. So we might need to put in something to start balancing out the armadillos. Mm. What eats the snakes other than like the king snakes? There's a good question. Would it be the badger? I feel like I kind of want to add in a bobcat. You know what, guys? Let's do it. Let's add in a bobcat because I think that this would probably be a good time. There's a lot going on here. 
Um, and I'm gonna put the bobcat like over here, maybe? If I can find a good spot. All right, I kinda wanna put it like over here. There we go. We'll put bobcat right here. Wow. Welcome, bobcats! Man, they're pretty! Oh, and there was a rattlesnake. Okay, don't get killed by the rattlesnake. All right, let's follow the bobcats around for a second. Oh, look at that mouse. He's so cute. Let's follow the bobcat around. Are you going to come eat this snake? Nope. We're just walking right past it. All right, what about you? Wow, look at all this life. Personally, I don't ever see this much life in the desert when I, like, look at it. But I'm not going to complain because I really like how pretty all of this is. Nice. Very nice, very nice. All right, no idea where that bobcat's going. Where's the other bobcat going? Other bobcat's coming over here, little mouse, who's fattened up on all my ants. You're being watched. But yeah, we'll have to see what the bobcats decide to eat. Are they gonna stick mostly to armadillos? Are they gonna eat the mice? How's that gonna balance out? He changed his mind. Oh, where's he going? Don't tell me you're gonna eat the ants too. Uh, he's still going. Mushrooms? Are you just are you just roaming on the open plains? Okay, well he he doesn't seem that hungry yet. Let's go find the other one. The other one's just roaming around too. All right, so it seems like they're doing okay. I hope that was the right choice. I think I need to put down more grass and plants, maybe more ants, so there's enough food for everybody. Yep, that guy's just gonna take a nap. <laughs> Got all excited about adding in some big predators. And what do they do? What most big predators do. Just fall asleep and take a nap. All right, so let's add in a couple more of these bushes just as good spots for the prey animals, the herbivores, and the, the scavengers and everybody to come over and get plenty of food. And then I guess we will put down... Oh, uh, no. Maybe a desert willow? Yeah, maybe a desert willow. It's really awkward because I don't want to add in tons and tons and tons of like plant life to the desert. I really feel like it would have added a different layer of difficulty to have to deal with water, like precipitation. Um, precipitation competition, water competition, which is a real thing for the environments to have to deal with. But I'm kind of glad it didn't because now we can just add in a ton of plants and not really have to worry about the fact that it's the desert. All right, so we'll put some of these guys over here. I am trying to spread them out a little more than I usually do and just tuck some grasses in between as we can. All right, so who's the kangaroo rats who are about to go out? Probably these guys. Did we already lose? Probably these guys. So it looks like the kangaroo rats just cannot compete, but there's tons of deer mice. So we'll have to see how that works out. We've still got all of our armadillos. And how is our coral snake population doing? Getting a little hungry, so we'll have to see what they decide to eat. But alright you guys, I think that's pretty good for now. Like our desert is going along pretty good. I'm pretty surprised. So the kangaroo rats are having a much harder time of it. And I wonder if that means that they're easier prey for certain predators. Or if that means that they just... Oh, somebody got eaten. Or there's somebody that got eaten there too. Oh, we're starting to see a little bit of balance. Things are being eaten. But yeah, I can't help but wonder... Oh, there's, there's death there too. If the kangaroo rats are easier to hunt on some level then maybe the deer mice and that might be the case that might be why they're not being as successful as the deer mice because maybe the deer mice aren't quite as easy to hunt also these moths are very pretty and we have our four tortoises i wish you could name them that would be really cool if you could like track and name some of the long-lived animals like these guys <gasps> look at them though look at them they're so cute they're so cute all right so that should take care of everybody Multiple groups of deer mice. I was just saying you guys were doing fine. Now you have low populations. Oh, you guys really do have low populations. I think I need more mice. Oh no, like I can't find the mouse balance. How do I balance my mice? Oh my gosh, how many mice do I need to provide balance for this? Can I have too many mice? I don't know. The questions, you guys, the questions. All right, well, here we go again. Trying to build up that gigantic big bottom to our like food pyramid making sure that everybody has enough to eat There should be tons of mice now. So wow <laughs> Our desert has grown significantly and we'll have to come back later and see oh there is death There is death everywhere. I doubted the fact that there was going to be death and now there is death and a very fat Well-fed rattlesnake if you ask me. <laughs> oh my gosh. There's death everywhere
<laughs> All right. So yeah, we'll just have to kind of keep an eye on things and see how our bobcats settle in and whether or not we've made any really terrible mistakes, but it's always so fun to see how much progress has been made. So we'll check in on Fernville and not Kansas next time, and then we'll wind back around like this gorgeous snake that's winding by and see how uh, Pirate Canyon does next time. So I'll see you guys then. Bye-bye.